political buying movie tickets. Uh, economics. Yeah. Yeah. The big question is the GVA going to do exactly the same thing. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I haven't been to GCC for a long time. Actually lost my way up <laughs> to your office. But anyway, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm sure uh, <coughs> most of you uh, will probably uh, haven't worked since I started my career in Central. I started working 1973. In other words, 51 years ago. And I've seen Hong Kong going through so many cycles. And recently, Professor Roach wrote about an article that Hong Kong is over. I couldn't help but to write another article together with my fellow professor at Hong Kong University Professor Tang, uh, asking ourselves the question whether Hong Kong is over. And our conclusion is Hong Kong has seven characteristics which are so unique to our country that if we can keep the seven characteristics and if the government policies you know, are working, I don't think Hong Kong will be over. As a matter of fact, Hong Kong will shine again. Hong Kong will reach another new height. Now, uh, let me, just for the sake of the audience, we count the seven points I talked about. The first point is stability of our financial market, which is very important, and also strengthening of our position as an IFC. This is very important, as you all know. I mean, financial stability is key to any city or country's success. And I firmly believe that Hong Kong as an IFC, in spite of the performance uh, of our stock market recently, uh, is doing well. Because financial market is not just about stock market. It also include banking. A lot of the uh, top 100 banks in the world have an office in Hong Kong. It includes insurance, which is you know uh, my area now, FWD, uh, doing very well. Our Hong Kong market, because of the mainland uh, uh, customers, has very, very large market compared to the rest of Southeast Asia. Uh, we are only 50% of Japan, which is a very mature market. So you can imagine the size of the insurance business. Our wealth management is doing very well, managing a lot of money, and uh, attracted so many family offices and uh, you know wealthy individuals putting their money here. And then our bond market, which I was very uh, much involved, because about 22 years ago when I was Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury, one of my uh, policy objectives was to promote the bond market, and bond market is now doing very well compared to, say, 22 years ago. The only one that is not doing so well is the stock market. But stock market is a cycle, you know? It's just like recently started the year of dragon. Suddenly, you know, the market seems to be, uh, you know, more uh, active again. Uh, index went up. So I'm confident that as China's uh, economic issues are being resolved, as uh, global interest rates started to trend down, I think our stock market would do better. Uh, I don't know when. I don't know how much, don't ask me that, I wouldn't know. Uh, but in other words, as a financial uh, center, I believe that we will be doing very well. Of course, we have to continue to do with innovation, we continue to have to work hard. That is why all of you can help to you know, promote the market, 
you know, strengthen our market. Then another point which is very important is our, uh, you know, government. Our government, as you all know, is has literally no corruption, and uh, and also is very efficient. Now, one argue, oh, you know, we have seen this problem in the government, that problem in the government, and it's not efficient. That's not the right way to look at it. You know, uh, Luzon. Uh, has come up with a report stating that Hong Kong government is the most efficient government in the last five years, ranking number two. That's the kind of scientific mm. report we have to base on. We can't base on, you know, isolated case or uh, your view on certain matter, then draw the conclusion. Government is not efficient. That's not the right way, but we should base on facts. And, uh, and studies, scientific studies like the Luzon uh, uh, study. And corruption free, we, are, we have a very high ranking in the world. And then the third thing is we must have a independent judicial system and that we have you know, a common law system, which we do have. And the fourth thing is about the fact that we can move capital and people freely, which is, you know, very much the case in Hong Kong. Uh, you know, if you want to remit money, you don't have to go to a MA to, for approval, for example. You know, you want to leave town unless you are a criminal, you are free to leave. Uh, and the fifth factor is the use of internet. And just about, I think, 10 days ago, one agency wrongly reported that uh, Hong Kong is going to ban some internet, and suddenly, wow, the whole town, you know, erupted. So you can see the importance of internet freedom is so important as an IFC. The sixth point is education. We need talents. We need homegrown talents, and we need to attract talents to this town and. The good thing is that our universities rank very high in the world ranking, and uh, we produce a lot of top talents, as well as we have a, a very good education system that train our young people, STEMs, etc. And the final point is that we must attract <coughs> talents from all over the world. So, recently, yes. In the last couple of years, we lost some people, you know, who migrated for whatever reasons. But we also attracted a lot of people. And one point that was made by some KOL is, oh, you're only attracting some mainlanders, you know, not international. That is wrong because based on Hong Kong U study, a lot of these uh, mainlanders are actually educated abroad, and they are well educated, they actually are more qualified than some of our own people who migrated. This is according, again, to a study, not just our subjective view. So, if we can maintain these seven characteristics and strengthen it, if possible, and the government is now pushing like, you know, the innovation, pushing the financial services development, if those policies work, I am confident that you know uh, our motherland will keep these seven characteristics under the one country, two systems, and Hong Kong, you know, will reach new height. So that's how I see Hong Kong. Now let me go back a few years. Hong Kong has suffered since 2019. We all know what happened, followed by COVID. Okay and the geopolitical situation. So the whole situation is probably the toughest period we have experienced for a long time. And this, some of this uh, phenomenon is not due to our own making. It's just you know geopolitical, there's nothing we can do about it, okay? We are at the mercy of you know, some superpower. Uh, COVID can't do much. Except government has rightly used the reserve to save a lot of business, you know, 
um, maintain the uh, livelihood of many people. But there's no question our economy has been hard hit. Someone asked me yesterday, how does our economy compare with, say, uh, 2003, when I was with the government? I would say that it is not as bad if you look at the numbers. Unemployment rate is not as high. <coughs> Negative equity is not as high. Okay? However, we do suffer because stock market is low. Uh, some people lost money on bonds because the interest rates higher. And on top of it, our property prices have gone down. And poverty to a lot of people is an important asset class. So in that regard, we all feel poorer. I don't know how many of you feel rich, but I certainly feel poorer. <coughs> so given that, uh, the situation is tough. And I feel, since we're talking about Challenges. I mentioned the challenges, okay? Geopolitical and all this situation are affecting us. But how do we get out of it? What are the opportunities? Well, I see strong backing by our motherland. So there's opportunity. You know, you're looking at a country with 1.4 billion people with very, very strong leadership and economic resilience. They are facing problem too, no question about it. But I am con confident they will get out of it. So we should capitalize on this strong backing by our motherland. But we also have to, I think, change our business model. In the old days, we rely on US, Europe. You know, in the future, I think we need to look at more ASEAN business. We need to look at Middle East uh, business, uh, and and I was delighted to see this LIV golf over the weekend in Hong Kong. Very successful weekend, made Hong Kong proud. Millions of viewers, I got email and messages from my friends all over the world saying, oh, I watch Hong Kong, you know, on golf channel, wonderful, you know, blah, 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 blah. And that put Hong Kong on the map. So, I think we need to change our business model. We can't just follow the traditional way of doing things. We need to think ahead. And one of my uh, favorite topic is uh, reindustrialization of Hong Kong. You know, we used to uh, kind of, I wouldn't say dump the industry, but felt that we're not competitive in the industry. But Ever since I left the government, I've talked to all the former chief executive and say, please look at high value industry. How do we, you know, put some high value industry in Hong Kong? So I'm not saying it now. I'm say I've been saying it for the last 15 years. Uh, I like the Switzerland model. Switzerland has very high value industries and. I really think that would work for Hong Kong today, you know. Particularly, we will be developing the uh, northern metropolis, you know, and all that, and we will have land to accommodate some of this high value industry. So my point is that we are entering a new era, given the geopolitical situation, given the uh, situation we have experience in the last five years, we need to put on our thinking cap, you know, and started to adjust ourselves and not just walking the same path, you know, like the past. And I'm convinced with our Lion Rock spirit, we will be able to get out of this, you know, uh, tough time, shall we say. Uh, right now, the whole world is looking at us uh, you know, the whole world think that we are not going to do well. Let's prove to them that we can do well. I still remember 1997, I think it was the Fortune magazine, you know, that had the head, uh, headline, Hong Kong is dead. And uh, 27 years on, we proved to them that, you know, we're not dead. We are still 
alive and kicking, okay? Although recent years, thanks to all these factors, we may kick less than before, but we're still kicking. So let's prove them wrong. Patrick, I'll stop here. Okay, thank you, Dr. Trent, for the, giving us uh, the perspective right now, and also a couple of years back. You talk about um, some of us being poorer than you are one of those. And the problem is a measure of confidence. Do you think uh, the confidence level of the most of Hong Kong people is not really very high at this point in time? Well, as I said, Patrick, you know, the confidence level has dropped, you know, because of all the poor performance of the asset class I talk about. You know, when you when you feel that you're poorer, your confidence level generally would go down. I mean, this is a natural reaction. But my point is, think of the positive side and not just focus on the negative side. Then you, you'll be fine. As long as you have, you have to be persevere, you have to be resilient. We have always been resilient, okay? And uh, so that is a matter of attitude. And I don't blame people for being uh, losing some confidence. When your property uh, has gone down in value, when your portfolio has gone down in value, you will question, oh, when will this market be back? And the business is affected by, sorry to say, the stock market. You go to the restaurants, okay? You know, business is being affected because people say, oh, I don't want to spend that kind of money. You know, I want to conserve more cash. This is very natural and normal reaction to, to, to uh, a situation like this. But my point is, you know, we have seen up and down. Right now we are down, right? So some people make money because they take advantage of the dark market. Nobody make money when you buy it high, you know, and sell low, right? You buy low and you sell high. That is how you make money. So you have to have confidence. Okay, now I know the right now, right now the stock market is sort of slowly moved back. Uh, it passes mm -hmm. 17,000 points mark, mm -hmm. and the market seems to be more uh, active than before. I know in particular today, you are full of confidence, you are happy because you just done the health check. At the age of an old man, so called, he came as an old man, so clean score. So if you are doing a health check for Hong Kong, do you think Hong Kong uh, is the same as you, there's a clean uh, medical reporter? <coughs> or is there some areas you think Hong Kong is not as clean as you? Uh, although I, actually I just passed 72. Huh? Uh, and I just did the health check, like you said. I, I don't mind telling him, you know, being an old friend, that you know I had a clean report this morning, so I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something. Uh, good health needs investment. If I keep on eating like I did when I was younger, uh, desserts at lunchtime and dinner, uh, drink like a fish, and no exercise, I guarantee you, in two years' time, I'll be 300 pounds, you know, my cholesterol level will shoot through the roof, you know, and my diabetes would deteriorate to the point of, you know, uh, affecting all the organs. So, like an economy, it's the same thing. I think we have a relatively healthy, clean report, but, but you still have to work on it. You still, you cannot be complacent. You have, must have a sense of crisis. I always have a sense of crisis, okay? about my own body. So, so is the economy. My, uh, that is why I exercise, play golf, go to the gym, but I also pay attention to my diet. Same as the economy. You can't say, oh, I got the back up by the motherland. I don't have to work. No, you have to work, right? You know? Oh, I, I have, uh, 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 the confidence of people, so I don't have to come up with good policy. No, you have to do something. So, you know, any economy is just like a human being. We have to have a sense of crisis. We can, cannot be complacent. 
That's my view. It's very timely that two weeks ago, the, our financial secretary has released the 2024 budget. And uh, many people said that they're trying to the, restore the confidence of Hong Kong, mm -hmm. uh, trying to give less because uh, we are seeing a possible the big deficit in the mm -hmm. coming years when there will be thousand uh, or, or $120 million of the bonds to be issued so mm -hmm. the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. And some people worried about um, the, the the situation of Hong Kong financial in the next five years. Do you share the same view of those that are being more pessimistic, or staying a little bit optimistic? Well, uh, I'm a realist in this regard. Uh, in Chinese, we have uh, a line saying, Yao Jie Yao Wa, Shang Dang Ya Ya, which means you're fine if you have the ability to borrow and repay. Repayment doesn't mean that you have no debt. It's just that lender are willing to lend to you, believing that you have debt servicing ability. That's what it means, being a banker by background. I know that. How can a company without debt, right? It cannot function without debt. Same as, I don't know whether you have mortgage loan or not, but many people do. But why are they comfortable? because they have the so-called debt servicing ability through their jobs, through their own wealth creation. Similarly, in a city, if you have debt, that's okay. Provided you have the debt servicing ability in the eyes of the rating agency. Okay? Don't get yourself in a situation when rating agencies downgrade. That is the risk. So far, no. I don't see that. Okay? And I'm sure that FS will monitor that very carefully, not end up in that sort of situation. As long as you're not in that sort of situation, it's okay to have debt. Okay? Um, we're not a country. We cannot print our own money. But nonetheless, okay, our credit rating is very good. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. But I would monitor that carefully, okay, not want to end up having so much debt that, you know, a rating agency would downgrade Hong Kong. Then you will fall into the, the trap of okay, you know, as the advertising goes, you have to have the ability to repay. So, very important. Um, so my point is, Patrick, uh, I don't share any pessimistic view, I don't share any uh, different views from our former colleagues, from my former colleagues. I just want to make sure that, you know, we have the good credit rating. That's very important, you know. Uh, I'm sure the FSA has taken all this into account when he uh, come out the budget. Uh, and I, I, I just hope that you know the policies that the government is implementing will work, and making the economy brighter again. That's what I hope will happen. Okay. Uh, looking throughout the, the budget, uh, it seems that the two main themes are sort of interwoven the whole budget. Mm -hmm. One is about the uh, technology. Mm -hmm. uh, how the government is going to the main use of technology. The second mm -hmm. one is about financing. In particular, in about the green financing. You mentioned about the bond market earlier and how successful the Hong Kong has been. I think the one of the future, the hope that the government is looking for is for green financing usual mm -hmm. bonds. Uh, if I understand correctly, the, about one third of the green bond issued in, in the whole of Asia was actually the, issued by Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So do you see that uh, as uh, one of the major the really the push for making Hong Kong in the green financing uh, being the top in the market? Uh, green financing clearly is now the kind of in thing. Huh? And uh, because of the uh, climate situation, it attracted a lot of attention, rightly so. Uh, but you know, I just want to, uh, I just saw a statistics yesterday saying that 
many of the so-called green bonds did not meet their performance standards. So I want to caution a bit on, you know, on that. But uh, I, I was the one in two, two promoting the bond market and very happy to see that the bond market is doing very well. As a matter of fact, uh, you may not know about this, MTR was the first one who issued green bond in Hong Kong. And it was because Laura Cha at that time, as the chairman of the EX, came to me and said, you know, uh, would MTR, I was chairman at that time, consider issuing a green bond? I said yes, without any hesitation, and asked our uh, finance director to, you know, issue the bond. So since then, the green bond market has just boomed. Uh, I see potential in that, but I see more potential for the B bond, you know, to be issued in Hong Kong as the, you know, uh, our motherland support us. So I see a lot of opportunity still in the bond market. Whatever name you call it, doesn't matter, you know. It, it, the key is that the accountants got work, the lawyers get work, you know, the stock exchange get the listing fee, that's most important. There's a reminiscent of what the Deng Xiaoping has said, uh, where there's a white cat or black cat, as long as the cat. Doesn't matter, you know, just <laughs> issue, yes. and that's okay. Yeah. So maybe at this juncture, I open it to the floor for those uh, audience who ask questions to Fred. Thank you, Professor Ma. I'm Michael Wong of Hong Kong. Uh, you're mentioning about health check, and one of the issues about health check is that when we look into Hong Kong, we see the disparity between the rich and the poor, the gap being increasing. Uh, 2019, you know, the gap was about 37 times, and uh, last year, also the report is now 57 times. So uh, naturally, we are concerned about that, especially at the bottom portion, bottom 10% of our households, they have lost about uh, approximately one third of their income. So I'm wondering how that would affect Hong Kong's uh, economy, stability, and governance as a whole when we see this kind of uh, social or phenomenon that's taking place. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Hong Kong being a capitalistic place, you know, uh, wealth gap uh, is not something that abnormal, I would say. But you're right, gap is getting bigger. I would say that um, this is not politically correct, but <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say it. I think the rich people in Hong Kong could do more for Hong okay. uh, Some NGO are doing their job, and uh, some you know, some uh, have started uh, uh, a lot of programs to help the poor, but. I feel that our well-to-do group, okay, can do more for Hong Kong. Uh, but unfortunately, I their performance so far is somewhat less than my expectation. Okay, I don't want to go into any groups or what they should do. But all I want to say is that you know I wish that the rich people in Hong Kong can do more for our poor people. <coughs> After all, they make all the money in this town. And they should give back. But I don't see enough. I'm not saying they're not doing it. Many of them are doing a lot of things, you know. And again, I don't want to name names. I have the names in my head. But uh, some of them are not doing enough. That's my point. I agree with you. Actually, on this, I want to sort of share the little story that, uh, you know, Red Cross is a uh, universal global, and Hong Kong is always, uh, uh, always running short of the blood in the, the bank. So in Hong Kong, apparently, if you have reached 67 years age, and you have never donated blood before, you need the doctor's certificate <laughs> before you can go and donate blood. And unfortunately, you reach 70 and beyond, they don't, accept your they don't accept blood at all yeah. from you. <laughs> but in other countries, uh, they do. So whether the Hong Kong's uh, policy rulings change, 
how do that, uh, you know, the... I don't know, I don't know the medical reason. I've donated bread before, but now I'm 72, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about uh, how rich people yeah. and all that, so rich people, everybody people are. But all these uh, arcane the policies and procedures, they need to be reviewed mm -hmm. to allow them, because now they even people are 70, huh? it's very healthy. Uh, mm -hmm. So just a, a little story to share with us about how the rich and poor and donation. Any question for the four? Yes, the gentleman. Yeah. Hi, uh, Frederick. Thanks for the honesty for the question, uh, first question. And here comes my second question. I'm Anthony. Uh, actually, I'm the food technology investor and real estate investor. And I would like to ask about the innovation culture in Hong Kong. As um, we all know that the government now uh, recently encouraged we are young and entrepreneurs to be greatly involved in the innovation um, industry. And actually, two years ago, I have diversified my business in Germany. I have set up a food technology lab in Cologne, and we have developed um, a lead to be positive results in the laboratory. And when I come to Hong Kong these two months, uh, I talked to different government officials. They were nice to support, but they rather focus on funding rather than how innovative the product we can improve. So what do you think about any improvement, or what do you think about the innovation how should be I look forward to your honest answers. <laughs> well, I'm no longer with the government, so I can't comment. You know. uh, well, uh, I think the government is right in focusing on funding because you are the expert in that area. It's very difficult for them to give you any valuable input, but they want to support you, right? You know, so I don't see any problem in that. You are the one who really knows your business. It would be bad, you know, let's say I'm the secretary, to tell you, you know, oh, you should do that, you shouldn't do that, right? You wouldn't like that. But you would welcome money in your bank account to support your venture, right? So I don't see any problem with that, you know. Uh, the key is you have all the support. I've talked to many people in Hong Kong about you know, technology sector, how to improve. And one of their concern, one of their concern is they don't have the supply chain to help them, including people, you know, maybe land, maybe, you know, uh, related technology to help their business grow. That's more a concern for the government to sort it out uh, on top of money. But, you know, you, that, I mean, I'm not a high-tech man, I'm a low-tech man, so I can't be more specific in my advice to you. Actually, John, this, uh, Hong Kong has, uh, like you said earlier, we've got very good universities mm -hmm. and a lot of good research being done, including Zoom and also mm -hmm. the Hong Kong about yeah. the facial recognition. All, well, I actually started from Hong Kong here. Yeah. It just uh, it seems that Hong Kong do not have a complete uh, eco-cycle for allowing all these development to be able to be commercialized. Do you think the government is moving more direct with this uh, non, uh, non, non metropolis and for top um, area, the focusing of the working closer with the possible? I, I think so, and I hope so. Um, Tell you a story. When I was Secretary for Commerce and Economic yes. Development back in 2007, I actually gathered a group of university uh, presidents and talked about promoting IT and among the students. And I still remember at that time, some of the presidents, most of them actually, said to me, Oh, you don't know, Secretary. Most of our students would like to study MBA, you know. They're not interested in this, you know, AI or stuff like that. And I was one of the first people to invite Jet Ma to come to Hong Kong University to speak. And I still remember some people asked me, who is Jet Ma? Mm -hmm. This is back in two way. You know, I mean, it sounds like a joke, but it wasn't. And today, of course, the world has changed. Now, everybody, everybody focuses on technology. My point is you must have the vision of looking forward, okay? 
uh, to develop, particularly this sector. And, uh, you know, back to your point, I think government is with the uh, cyber port, science park, uh, which developed over the last, you know, particularly 10 years, is more focused now. But 16 years ago when I was secretary, it was not, I can tell you that, including the university, was not focusing on technology. So I do see some good changes, but, but because Shenzhen has now become the Silicon Valley of China, we have to speed up. We can't move you know, at, the, at the same speed. We have to drive a Ferrari and you know, I'll drive them. They are probably more complacent because they have done so well. Then it is our time to speed up and drive a Ferrari and beat them. It's a very interesting uh, example you're illustrating. For those who have watched uh, Top Gun 2, you can remember <laughs> one of the lines that Tom Cruise have said, he was his average trainer, and then uh, this bunch of uh, students of this uh, is going to do this uh, mission impossible. And uh, they are saying, well, our enemies got these so advanced uh, aircraft. How are we going to really get ourselves out after we drop our bombs and like that? <laughs> and what Tom Cruise said was, it's not about the plane. It's about the pilot. So even though you may not have a Ferrari, you may still be trying to go Your skills, experience, you may still be able, if you understand the role and the design of that, you may still be able to beat a Ferrari. Would that be possible? Anything is possible. Yeah, you, know? never. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have the positive attitude and everything is possible. So it's a right? pilot, you know? so much about the plane. Well, so it, it, it helps, you know, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> <laughs> if you give me a Ferrari to drive <laughs> and you drive a Toyota, chances are I'll beat you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any more questions? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fred. Very interesting, Mark Michelson. Remember the good old days in government as well as as well as other things. I want to follow up on some of the things that have been raised. You mentioned sort of about the pillars of Hong Kong, right? Financial services, clearly the major, the major one. And I think you outlined why it's still going to continue to be strong and will innovate and go in other ways. We've been talking about the technology, which is clearly a priority and maybe maybe a high, a high value added manufacturing, things like this. First of all, how are we going to do it? Do you think, would there be cooperation with the GBA to a much greater extent, especially since you know, part of the problem with COVID is things moved on in the GBA. They may have been some restrictions, but we were restricted too, and they just moved on and, and we weren't part of that. So we have to catch up a little bit. And are there other areas that we can develop in Hong Kong, maybe not technology, arts and culture has been mentioned, others that might more be a, a pillar of Hong Kong going forward? Um, well, some of your questions have to be addressed by government officials. And uh, <laughs> so I'm not in a position to, to comment, so, you know, can't answer you. But in terms of the areas, uh, I, I must say that I have to tell you the story back in 2004, when I visited Seoul, Korea. Uh, the then Deputy Prime Minister of Korea said to me, and it hurts me so much, he said, we used to watch your Bruce Lee. Yeah. Now you're watching my Korean episodes. <laughs> <I have got. laughs> After that visit, I actually felt very unhappy. I said, how can, you know, we lose that position? But 20 years on, our position, vis-a-vis -a -vis, vis -a -vis Korea, has gone down even further with black pain. With, I mean, I have never watched them, but my, my grandchildren told me, you know. And, uh, and all these Korean episodes, uh, people in Hong Kong are watching, and, you know, they are so popular, whereas Hong Kong, you know, uh, we have been conquered by many other 
you know, uh, countries, including the mainland in, in that area. But I'm so glad to see Alibaba was spending, will be spending $5 billion to revive that sector. I think we have a lot of talent as well, but we need to make sure that we have successors to them, like our Jackie Chan, for example. I mean, he is the Taylor Swift of Asia, all right? When he had all the concerts here, it was all packed. I went to the inaugural concert, concert with so many mainlanders, people all over the world to come also, okay? But Jackie, my friend, you know, I, I interviewed him on TV, you know, in case you don't know. Uh, he's over 60 years old, all right? I wish he can sing until 100, but <laughs> chances are difficult, right? So who would succeed him? So I think we could invest in, 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 in the sector to continue our glorious days. I firmly believe it. I mean, we have produced so many famous singers and actors like Tony Leung and all these guys are world famous. We have to capitalize them more, but also, you know, bring some more successes to this sector. That's the one sector that I really believe we can do better because we have such a great foundation. Another sector is shipping. We're going to drop below number 10 pretty soon. But is this the end? No. We need to change the model. I think our former CECY Leung has some good suggestions. I'm not a shipping man, although I do sit on a shipping company board, but I would say that Hong Kong needs to change the model of you know shipping by focusing on law, finance, that sort of thing, instead of you know competing on container terminal, you know, that's gone, that's gone, right? So, mm. but, are we really gone? No, because there are other areas in the shipping industry where you can do better, right? So, I'm saying that's why we have an old saying, right? If you have a will, you have a way. Okay. So, let's think hard and work between the private sector and the public sector and come up with good ideas to win, the, the, uh, 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 win back some of our positions. But those are the two sectors, other than the technological sector, where we have lagged behind. I'm sure you would agree with me, being a former government guy, okay? And uh, we need to work harder, and uh, including many, many areas, uh, we need to work harder. Uh, tourism, for example. Tourism, you know, I was talking to a group of friends. I said, tourism is a big business to us. But we need to improve one area first, okay, to win particularly high-end tourists. And I said, do you know which, uh, which area? He and I think alike. Our taxi system. <laughs> okay. If you want to get, I, I don't know why, if I have money, I would invest in taxi, you know, and went away the system, but nobody does that. You go to Japan, okay, you take taxi, aren't you feel very comfortable, okay? Why? The drivers are very courteous, the drivers are very nice, right, always bring you to the destination, and you look at the meter, everything's fine, right? In Hong Kong, I, I don't mean to criticize the taxi drivers here the group, but I, I take taxi, and sometimes I'm frustrated too. So why can't we have taxi that have, for example, Wi-Fi in the car? Why can't we have taxi, maybe Mr. Yu can invest, and why can't we have drivers who are in uniform, why find the car when you get into the taxi and say, Mr. Yu, would you like to have a bottle of water? <laughs> oh, hey, wow, you know, your experience would be different, right? And that makes Hong Kong, you know, more attractive to tourists. So, I mean, they are, I'm, I'm saying, you know, I, of course, I'm just thinking out loud. 
Sure, there are a lot of issues. But uh, I think government did propose to renovate uh, or, or, or we, 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 we ramp our taxi system, but received a lot of vested interest uh, resistance. So, but you need to collectively, as a society, let's ask ourselves, how do we attract high quality tourists? Okay, all right. What the government proposing is good. I mean, you know, you have more attraction, you have more um, uh, firework, that's fine. But, you know, on top of that, think of more basic stuff, right? Like taxi. Okay, we still got time for one or two more questions from the floor. Yes, please, this lady in the front. Hi, thank you, Ms. Lamar. I'm Joanne Wong from Bank of America. Um, so recently, I think I'm the first lady to ask the question here. Um, so uh, recently, Singapore has instilled a lot of immigration changes, which has made the business landscape a little bit more challenging, or maybe a lot more challenging for a lot of the uh, business there. I thought this is an opportunity for Hong Kong, given the similarity between you know, the two communities. So I wanted to ask what might be something that you might recommend our business community locally here that we can do, I mean, besides the government have relaxed some immigration policy, to encourage these business, if they want to look for an alternative, to consider coming to Hong Kong instead of other places like Dubai, etc. right? Because there's, there's a lot of, of changes, and when you look closer, a lot of these business can actually move either the headquarter or maybe some of the staff that maybe they couldn't really get the employment permit with you to actually come and invest or work in Hong Kong. And I felt that could be an opportunity to consider. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think the government is very uh, uh, actively promoting all this so-called talent scheme. Uh, and I think private sector can always give government you know, advice on what is the uh, issue. Uh, for example, uh, about a year ago, I talked to a senior government official about Vietnamese coming to Hong Kong. And uh, because in, in the insurance business, I see a lot of talent in Vietnam. As a matter of fact, our group CEO is Vietnamese. So I feel that we could attract some like, actually from Vietnam, even some finance people from Vietnam who are educated in UK and US. I see some talents when I visited Vietnam. And uh, cross fertilization is one of our uh, corporate strategy. So I want to bring some Vietnamese to Hong Kong. But I was told that it's very difficult. You know, then uh, good to see that our chief executive policy address last year addressed this and said they would, you know, uh, be they would be more receptive to accepting uh, these people. I don't know whether it has to do with what I said to someone high up in the government, but uh, I'm happy to see that. And I think all of us could help the government by telling them what are the issues. I'm sure they listen, and then we could attract more people to Hong Kong. And oh, by the way, this uh, our group CEO, FWD's group CEO, is quite a story. He is Vietnamese. He came to Hong Kong as a one of those bold people, and uh, he made it. Okay, he has been the group CEO of FWD Group for ten years over 10 years, and uh, he had done well at AIA, Prudential, and he told me, he said, uh, I really love Hong Kong, because when I uh, was one of those old people, Hong Kong government took me to Ocean Park, and uh, he never forget that. See, this is a kind of soft, you know, power we have, and uh, so he said to me, I wish you guys keep the Ocean Park. <laughs> but you know, Hong Kong has great soft power too, other than our hardware and everything else. So. Any more questions from the floor? When you mention soft power, that's what Hong Kong government should really spend much more time mm -hmm. and energy and thought and planning. 
creative industries is the leader. We sit on the edge of the greatest creativity, creation, realization place in the world, which is the Great Bay Area. We are not making enough connectivity. We, we have to go in more. We have to go in more. We have to get more. <coughs> mm -hmm. I think I agree with you, Kai. And uh, you know, like you being a very famous designer, you know, your your product should be sold throughout the Bay Area. I never got any training, and that's what I'm trying to say. You can move people. Yeah. I never, I never got any training as a government official. <laughs> <laughs> that is why, you know, I uh, I didn't know how to do my job for a while. You know? <laughs> anyway. Learning by doing, that's yeah. always a uh, good tool to uh, make yourself be more useful. And perhaps I will take the last question. So if there's uh, no more the question from the floor, is why are you still working? Even though you <laughs> <laughs> should you be giving your the position to other younger, more uh, uh, less experienced people? Uh, <laughs> well, you need first of all, money. first of all, first of all, I uh, I really don't work as such. You know, if you would define work as getting up every day at 8 o'clock to go to office, I don't. Uh, I'm just doing the so-called ING jobs, and uh, I invest, not in money, but in my health, as I mentioned before, and uh, I enjoy my family life, and uh, that's all I've been doing, okay? Uh, talking about money because now I feel poorer. I think I have to work hard. <laughs> uh, but working, working for all of us, particularly young people here, uh, I bet you no one here is older than me in this room, including Mr. Yu. Uh, I would say, I would say, <laughs> I would say, I would say, work is good for you because you know it force you to use your brain, okay? And uh, like to write the Stephen Roach rebuttal, you know, I have to use my brain power. And uh, using your brain power is good because your brain cell will be more active, you know? So I encourage all of you to work, continue working, continue to contribute to Hong Kong. Thank you very much. On that, please join me in the interesting the changes and give us more importance. It's about how how poor you are, but the confidence of you in Hong Kong. But obviously, we have to thank you to come in to support the chamber event. Uh, I hope you like uh, the, our session today. And uh, please uh, help us uh, to improve our work better by giving us some feedback, good or bad. Uh, on topics and uh, events that you would like the chamber to consider more so that we can bring you more uh, to actually, uh, so that the few thousand dollars you pay as membership deal. <laughs> 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 so a little bit of a little advertising, the, the, the April, the one, two, three CEO, Kevin Watong. We have invited uh, Christine Lowe, the one oh, is the She is now the chief friend. strategist of the Institute of Environment of the Hong Kong the University of Science and Technology. She will also be talking about Hong Kong, uh, from obviously from a different perspective, uh, but she also be the, giving us some sharing of the understanding of how our motherland is doing in terms of the demographics, in terms of sustainability, in terms of the technology breakthroughs. So I hope that will be a topic of interest to you. So do come back uh, on the second Wednesday of every month at one o'clock. That is the one, two, three. To tell me more. So thank you once again and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Buying movie tickets, uh, economics. Yeah. The big question is the GPA going to do exactly the same. Uh,